Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Danny here today. I'm talking to you about Ariadne in the Blue Sky. So this is written and drawn by Norihiro Yagi, and this is the guy that did Claymore. I'm a super big fan of Claymore, fantastic series, highly recommend. It always gets compared to Berserk because there is a lot of similarities, but it's its own thing and it is fantastic. And this is the series after that, and this surprisingly is published in Weekly Shonen Sunday. Uh, I say surprisingly because Claymore was a jump title in their monthly magazine, so it's rare to see manga because, you know, move magazines. Happens every now and then, but super rare. And yeah, Shonen Sunday, of course, Inuyasha, Kenichi, Komi-san, Zatch Bell, a lot of other great series. And this started back in 2017, currently ongoing at 141 chapters at the moment. So right on, man, let's go ahead and get into this series that starts with our main character, Lassile who is just a young boy that lives in the mountains with his two twin sisters and their grandfather. And one day when he's going out to go get some food, uh, he stumbles upon one of his traps and sees that there is a steel boot attached to it. And then above he hears someone talk and it is a girl around the same age as him on the tree and the boot belongs to her. And before they have a chance to really talk, a giant boar shows up into the forest and is about to attack them, and then the ground gives way where they're at, which is a cliff, and thus causes them to fall, and as they're falling, this girl decides to grab La Cile, and they slowly descend down, and as he lets go of her, she starts to float into the air. With so many questions, he asks, what's going on, why can you do this? And she says she has the angel's disease, which later on is not a real thing, as we find out. Uh, it's just her trying to hide her identity in a sense. And so they're talking. And the next thing you know, we see these soldiers in mech suits looking for her. And it turns out she's actually a princess for the city uh, Ariadne. And they're trying to escort her back to where they came from because she has an arranged marriage she has to uh, do. And the reason she escaped is because she's never really left the city and wanted to really explore the world and enjoy it before she is set to become the wife in this political marriage never to really see anything else again after that point and with Lassile being the main shonen protagonist he is decides to step in and wants to do what is right based off of good feelings and to make her life just a little bit easier decides to fight these guys and as we find out he's not ordinary he is what people call a photon carrier and these were people that were experimented on that uh, can wield this energy in this world, uh, which is light. They were created for the war that ended six years ago in this world. And when the war ended, they were supposed to be discarded of, but 11 of the children in training were able to escape. And Lassile here was one of them. And we see him rocking some cool looking gloves and he's got some boots and he uses these as the weapons by channeling the photon energy within him and pushing it outward in these tools so he could fly, pack some serious punches and shoot these, I guess like little light pellets, sort of like a shotgun in a sense, kind of like how Yusuke does in Yu Yu Hakusho when he's using more than just the spirit gun, he could use it in a shotgun blast form, similar to what's going on here. After he wipes out this whole team, we find out that in these fairy tales he's been reading to his sisters these floating skies are real and this is where this princess comes from and the reason that uh, she can float and has to wear these heavy boots is because the floating city will draw her back and so that's why she wears those to weigh herself down so that way she can explore the city and after things start to settle down Lassie's grandfather asks him what do you want to do man you could stay here the rest of your life in this mountain or you could go with her and go on this adventure give her the chance to see the world before she is lost in this political marriage and for you as well because you've been hiding this entire time not really knowing what the world is and so after they defeat the final remnants of these troops coming in Lassile takes the princess whose name is Liana and they go on this adventure together uh, trying to explore this fantasy setting that we are in as she has never really met any of the other 12 races 
that are uh, in this world, right? It's very traditional in the fantasy setting uh, where we have a bunch of different human-like races and they're all unique and all have pretty interesting backstories once you get into them. And that's how we start off this series. Uh, definitely takes a lot of drastic turns as we get further and further into the series. Of course, it's a shonen series, so you start off with the adventure, you get the world build up, Right, and then we get introduced to more characters coming in that eventually join the party, and then the real plot kicks in, and then we start moving into the heavy shonen battles. We get more depth with our characters, and now at chapter one forty one, we're knee deep into the plot. We have all the understandings that we need. Now there's a time limit for our characters to do what they have to do before things go at a greater stake. And as far as the writing goes in this series, it's fantastic, really solid. Everyone is energetic in the beginning as they should be because these are younger main characters, right? They're around 15 in the age range. And plus, they're very much trying to live as kids because of the situations at hand cause them to not grow up like that. So they're trying to enjoy their youth as much as they can. And it's very reflected in the writing. However, I will say in the beginning, I wasn't really feeling the dynamic with Lassile and Liana because... Liana herself was just, was pretty bratty. You know, it's the trope where, oh, the main heroine is of royal stature. So that causes them to have this attitude and they really don't want to express themselves at this certain point. And it's all really a lot of rinse and repeat when it comes to her reactions and how she's talking to Lassie So I wasn't really feeling that in the beginning. But then once she started opening up, she was actually a decent character. and. I was fine with it because Lassie himself is such a strong written protagonist that it's fine if she can be like that because he's really carrying the show at that point. And then, of course, when we get other main characters coming in who are friends of Lassie right, part of the Lost Eleven, uh, they're all pretty cool, too. They're all unique, and it's just what you would expect for for a good amount of them. I also appreciate the series because it feels like old, not super old school, but like early 2000s late 90s shonen era as far as how characters are and just the way that they're going into the stories a lot of same beats you can see in classic manga like that is shown in here with all the characters each new friend that shows up from the lost 11 they all represent a specific character type and it's written just like you would expect fantastically and wow i just have to say the lore in this world is great i gotta say the lore definitely took its turns because there was stuff I wasn't expecting and stuff that is pretty obvious. But the way it creeps in, it's very fast, but then things start to connect and make sense and all that is pretty good. Like the anticipation for the big plot twist reveals was good stuff because I, as I was reading it and we're getting more and more info sprinkled throughout the chapters leading up to the big reveal, right? You start theorizing stuff, start thinking, oh, maybe because of what they said and going back to this chapter... You're starting to connect the dots. All that stuff was really fun and made me want to read more of the chapters just to find out what this big reveal was. And I got to say, that is something I really wasn't expecting in a fantasy setting like this. Uh, so kudos to our boy Norihiro for that. Because, But before that reveal, we got the traditional fantasy setting stuff in here. Exploring all the different races with their backstories and how things are connecting. And all that stuff was fun. Norihiro has a keen eye for this stuff because if we go back to Claymore, that's also sort of set in a fantasy setting, but more towards the Witcher route rather than than just normal stuff like Lord of the Rings, Goblin Slayer, and that kind of thing. Yeah, because Claymore is more focused on the monster aspect of fantasy settings. And here we're more about the adventure and the uniqueness that each species has to offer for the series. And now I mentioned Claymore, right? This is the guy that did Claymore. I really liked that series a lot. And that's the main reason I picked this up because I looked at the art and I said, hey, this is the Claymore guy. I didn't know he was doing another manga. Let's check it out. And after reading it, I will have to say, yes, it is still good. I do recommend reading this. But if you're coming in expecting the same type of themes and settings that Claymore has to offer, this is not the case. Claymore was very mature, it could get pretty dark, and of course it had the great fights, but writing-wise, yeah, this is almost night and day. This one has a lot of energy in it, a lot of 
a lot of ambition and just stuff that really wasn't in Claymore. So that's really cool that we get to see Norihiro go on the other side of that type of writing. And now let's get into the art. Uh, I have Miguel. I remember I recommended Claymore to Miguel and he didn't want to read it because he thought the art style just wasn't that good. And I can understand the way Norihiro draws his characters, the way the eyes are mainly. Uh, it can be off-putting, but when you get later into the series, uh, it gets more refined. And then just the detail and the aesthetic, the designs in Claymore is fantastic. You know, it's, you almost forget about that stuff. And especially with the monster designs that he does is fantastic. And here in Ariana in the Blue Sky, it's all here as well, but it sort of has that modern Killeen look to it. Some of it really works. Like there's these centaur races and there's a good spread shot of them with their light bows and they look fantastic. But then there are certain shots with our main characters like Lassile where it just not, I'm just not feeling the art with that. And I think that's just because of like I said it has like that new feel to it like you can tell obviously what era manga came in and nowadays right when you look at mangas like this and a couple other ones I've mentioned where it looks like oh yeah this art looks pretty modern just something about it uh, I'm sure Norihiro's drawing digitally these days a lot of manga because are moving to that new format so that's where some of that is uh, but the detail everywhere else is fantastic just sometimes the faces uh, I think it's because they're too simple and he's trying to bring in that innocent reactions. There's a lot of shouting, a lot of open mouth situations, a lot of them just being happy and all that. And it's just when they draw, he draws the faces like that, it's a little distracting. But no, overall, the art is fantastic as always, um, though there is not as much shading I noticed compared to what we saw in Claymore. Uh, in the backgrounds, sure, but when it comes to characters specifically and eventually when we fight these creatures... That do pop up every now and then. The details are just not there like it used to be. Uh, but of course, change of times, you know, years go by. Manga gets harder and harder to draw the longer you go, as we see in various series. And still strong in the design department as far as what we're seeing. Uh, the uniqueness that we see with the centaurs, you know, like they wear these pieces of clothing and armor that is very high-end fantasy, which I really like. Uh, there's these other races that can transform to fight dragons and uh, their designs look cool. Uh, we do see some uh, more modern touches on characters as they are in the human side of the story. And there's some good stuff there too. A lot to enjoy overall in this series. Uh, though I will say, again, it is very traditional shonen because the power of friendship gives us a couple level ups with some of our characters. You know, I was thinking, I, I guess that's fine. Right, because we're here to enjoy the moment. We get the understanding of how the powers work with the photon energy and these carriers. And the way it's explained is it's just their stamina. So if they want to get stronger, their power output would be stronger too, I guess. All right, but after some uh, image training, uh, Lassile specifically gets a huge bump up in the strength department. And that's really to push the plot forward, of course. But I don't let it bother me too much because at the end of the day, yeah, it is shonen. So you have to kind of let some of that reasoning slip away from your hands when you're reading stuff like this. Overall, guys, really enjoyed this series. It's a good read. It could be fairly fast up until you start to get a lot of the exposition about the main plot and all of that. But it's still a pretty good pace for 141 chapters so far. So I'm looking, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of the series has to offer. And really just explore more of the Lost Eleven characters and some of the war veterans that do pop up here and there uh, into the story. I want to see them come back and get some interesting stuff out of them as well. So right on, guys. That's all I have to say today. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, what do you think about this series? Is it a big step up from Claymore or is it just something along the way? Love to hear your thoughts. And you can send those emails to unversepodcast at gmail.com. And you can follow us anywhere on social media at Unverse Podcast, and we'll let you know when those episodes drop. So thanks, guys, and we'll catch you on the next episode.